I'd like to take off from the statement that Pastor June said that by the end of the year, you should be around 80. Are you excited for that? That's not impossible. Yes, it's difficult, but it is not impossible. Amen? With 40 people excited to disciple one each, that's 80. Next year, these 80 people will disciple one each, that's 160. And 160 will disciple one each, that's already 320. Amen? And so in three years' time, it's not impossible for our church to have 300 in attendance. Let us say half of it backslider, so only 150 remain. But in three years' time, you cannot see a church built with 150 people in three years' time. But through soul winning and discipleship, it is possible. Amen? And of course, why are we confident? What makes us confident that this can be done? What makes us confident that we can build more churches, that we could start more churches and we could build more buildings? That is what I'm going to share with you this afternoon. How we can actually face the future with confidence. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Let's all stand together, please, and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving and praise. First of all, dear God, we ask that you would cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and from all our sins and from all our wicked uh, deeds and thoughts. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would just make us worthy to receive thy word. Help your humble servant. Make him worthy to preach thy word, to be a channel of your holy word, O God. Make our hearts ready to receive this word of faith that would encourage us to face our future with confidence. Thank you, Lord, for the lesson that our patriarch have shared with our brothers and sisters. Thank you for our visitors. Thank you for those watching on YouTube right now. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You may now be seated. Listen to this. As believers, we are the only people among the 6.5 billion around the world that can claim a, a genuine confidence that when we die, we will go to heaven. There are countless religions around the world. Buddhism, Islam, in the Philippines we have Catholic, INC, all of it, name it. Listen to me. Only the Baptist people, all throughout the centuries since the very time of the Lord Jesus Christ, can preach a message that can produce a blessed hope and a sure confidence that once you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a genuine confidence and assurance that when you die, you will go to heaven. You ask a Catholic if he's sure about it. No, he is not sure about it. You ask the Iglesia ni Cristo, they are not sure about it. You ask the JW, you ask the Buddhists, you ask the Islam, you ask these people, are you sure that when you die, you will go to heaven? They cannot give you an affirmative answer. But praise God, because of the teaching of the word of God, the faith and the gospel that had been passed on from the Lord Jesus Christ to the Baptist disciples all throughout the centuries, we have the message of truth today and we can claim that we are ready to face death anytime because we are confident that when we die, we will go to heaven. Let me hear you say aloud, amen to that. However, folks, however, we are not yet in heaven. Our hope is not only the confidence to face death, but our hope is also a confidence to face life and our future here on earth. And so I speak to you this afternoon how to face the future with confidence. If I were to ask you, how do you see the future? How do you see the future? What would be your answer? We either see the future through the eye of faith and have a mind uh, through the eye of faith and, uh, sorry, we can either see the future through the eye of faith or have a mind full of doubts and fear. 
Now, I would like to encourage you that we need to see the future through the eye of faith. We either trust God and think big. Listen to me. Faith empowers us to think big. Do you know why Pastor June could declare by the end of the year, we will have 80 in attendance. Why? Because he is seeing the future in the eye of faith. If he will see, if, if we are looking at the future through, if, 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 we, if we are just looking at our own capacity or ability or our human, human you know, limitations, then we cannot project the future. You know, we, 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 could, we couldn't be able to say that by the end of the year, we will have 80 in attendance. Do you understand that? But because through the eye of faith, we believe that by the end of the year, we could have 80 in a strong, solid attendance because we are seeing the future through the eye of faith. Don't, don't forget to take this. Faith empowers you to think big and dare to do great things for God. Or we can be paralyzed by the spirit of fear. When we are controlled by the spirit of fear, we can never prioritize God's command. Because God's command, God's mandate requires our faith. Listen to me. God's grace is abundant, abundant, but our response should be faith. Every time, every time God tells you to do something, you can only respond to that through faith. Because humanly, it's impossible. Humanly, we don't have the will to do it. It is faith that can make it possible. How could Noah build an ark? The Bible says by faith. How could Abraham offer his son Isaac as God commanded him to do so? He did it by faith. How could Moses leave the honor and glory and comfort of Egypt and be with the people of God, the Israelites, and leave the place and lead them to the promised land. How could he do that? He did it by faith. How could we, now in our case, how could we perform the great commission? By faith. When we say great commission, we believe that the gospel should not only be preached in Oahu, there must be a gospel witness in Kauai, in Maui, in the Big Island. As HBBC, we are taking the great commission seriously, and there must be an HBBC gospel witness to every single island in the whole of Hawaii. And I believe. We can extend it to the mainland in USA. How can we fulfill the Great Commission to such a great extent and degree? We can only do it by faith. But if you're just sitting there and Pastor June is giving the challenge and you are muttering within your breath, I can do it. I can do it. It's impossible. No, we cannot. We have limited resources. I am busy. I don't know how to do it. If you are good in coming up with negative excuses, then I'm telling you, you are getting nowhere. You will never grow. You will never develop. And you will never be a blessing to the church where God has placed you. But if while you are listening, your heart is responding with faith and you are saying, God, I cannot, but you are not telling this to us if you will not enable us to do it. And so, God, I take it with faith. I accept it with faith. I believe it can be done. And I'm telling you, follow God and you will see. Let us face the future through the eye of faith. If we allow the spirit of fear to dominate us, we will diminish our usefulness. You know why many Christians are not useful in the ministry? It is not because they don't have education. It is not for the lack of resources. It is because of the lack of faith. Do you know why many churches are not growing? Do you know why many pastors are not growing? It is not because of their lack of material resources or lack of skill. It is simply the lack of faith. 
And so if you look at this lesson, the very bottom line and point of it all, folks, is faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Tell your seatmate, it can be done by faith. Do you believe? Tell your seatmate that. Come on. Tell your neighbor, it can be done by faith. Do you believe? Do you believe that you can disciple? Do you believe that you can disciple? Do you believe that you can win someone to Christ? Do you believe that you can invite a visitor next Sunday? Do you believe that our church can multiply? Do you believe that we can start a work in the, all, in the other islands of Hawaii? It's a matter of faith. Now listen to me. Fear keeps us from obeying God with our future. The reason why we could not obey God's commission to such a great degree and extent is because of our fear. We have our fears. We have our what ifs. We have our questions like, you know, how about this, you know? You know what fear means? I read from an article, the word fear is actually an acrostic, which means false evidence appearing real. It's a false evidence appearing real. You come up with lame excuses that, you know, you, it, it has never happened. It will, it will never happen. But you think as if those are real when they are not. Now, let's take, for example, these excuses are real. I would like for you to know that God is greater than your uh, uh, hindrances and obstacles in life. Therefore, fear is a result of believing a lie. And faith is a result of believing the truth. Let us not believe lie. Let us believe the truth. So believers who are confident, believers who take God's command by faith are confident and they are strong, effective, and fruitful. So we need to learn how to face our future with confidence. Of course, we cannot rest on our own strength because our own strength is not enough. Jesus said, Without me, you can do nothing. So let us dare to do it because we are confident that we have him. For he said, without me, you can do nothing. Our own understanding is not enough. You know, the Bible says that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. We can only think of 80 in attendance, but God can give us more than that. Because God is able to do more than we can ever think. So don't rely on your own understanding. We cannot do it by our own tools and resources and credentials because they are not enough. They are necessary and essential, but they are not enough. We need God. Amen? Now, let me share with you five keys, five ways on how we can face our future with confidence. Number one, you need to surrender your fears to God. Surrender your fears to God. We, we made it clear that fear limits us. Fear paralyzes us. Fear clouds our judgment. We cannot think clearly. We cannot see clearly. We cannot move with direction, with a strong drive for God because of fear. So what do you do with that? You have to surrender your fears to God. Remember our favorite song in church? Give them all to Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Listen to me. Fear is care. Care are concerns about our physical well-being. This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. Don't be anxious. Don't worry about what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Where we there shall we be clothed? God is saying, I know that you need these things. And I already have planned it out how I will provide it for you. I want you to focus your heart not on the cares of your physical well-being, but in seeking the kingdom of God first, for all of these things shall be added unto you. If we allow anxiety and care and fear of our physical well-being to take place and to be in charge of our mind, 
then folks, we will never do the work of God. And that's, that is not right. Because the reason why God is keeping you alive is so that you can do his work. He can use the angels to do his work. He can use the animal to do his work. He can use the birds to do his work. He can use any other creation to do his work. But he has ordained you and me, his people, believers of Christ, to do his work. And it is his job. It is his business to ensure that we are provided. He, 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 he will provide for our needs. So it should be our duty. We should take it our responsibility to do his work while we are alive. But because of the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, we cannot do the work of God. And so let us surrender our fears to God. In Psalms chapter 55, verse number 22, it says, Psalms chapter 55, cast thy burden upon the Lord. First Peter said, cast thy care. Psalms says, cast thy burden. So the word is Cast. Don't keep it. Don't let it nest in your heart and mind. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Folks, I know we all have burdens in life. Why would God say cast thy burden if he is not aware that his people have burden? And God knows that burdens will keep them from doing his work. Burdens and care will hinder them. God knows that our burdens and care will slow us down. That is why he invited us. He said, come to me. Come to me. Come boldly to the throne of grace. He is telling you, let not your burden stop you. Don't allow your cares and anxiety to keep you from obeying God's command. That's why God said, cast thy burden upon the Lord. I don't know what your burden is today, folks, but that is not the burden God wants you to carry. The burden that God wants you to carry is his work. The burden for souls, the burden of the ministry. He invites you to take his yoke. His yoke is the yoke of winning souls. It is the yoke of doing the work of God. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. That's the kind of burden that God wants you to bear. So I ask you today, what burden are you carrying? Is it the burden of your physical uh, welfare? Is it the burden of your cares? I am not saying that you do not think of your physical well-being at all. But God is saying that as you think and assess or your physical well-being, do not allow fear to take charge. But take it to the Lord. And God said, let your request be made known unto God. God is more than willing, more than interested. He's more than interested than you are to provide for your physical need. And so God doesn't allow your burden and care to be the hindrance so that you cannot do the work of God. You must empty your mind of fear and fill it in with God's promises and precepts. Fear will only make us weak, but faith will make us strong. So brethren, what are your fears in life? What are you afraid of? I don't know. Maybe sometimes it feels like your fear is being belittled by somebody like, oh, come on, yung bagay lang na yan, dahil lang dyan, hindi mo kinaya, parang sa kanila maliit yun, pero sa'yo malaki yun. I would like for you to know, God will not despise you. When you come to him and present to him your weakness, you will not be ashamed to tell him of that because hanakan to nga maliitin, hanakan to nga basitin, hanaka nga uyawin, hanako naking ka nga anyakan, dahi tala nga panagan, di kalakayan, hanako na tiapokan ka. Kaputaan mo na kakapsat. Jesus, you know, became flesh and he was tempted at all points just like we are. So that when you come to him, you do Come to him without any hesitation of giving all your care. Say, Lord, 
Ang burden ko ay anak ko. Ang burden ko ay trabaho ko. Ang burden ko ay yung schedule ko. Ang burden ko ay ganito. Ang burden ko ay ang relasyon naming mag-asawa. Ang burden ko ay ang magulang ko. Come on, tell everything to God. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. But it doesn't end there. That is just the beginning. God wants you to release these burdens to Him so that you can freely serve Him with confidence. That's number one. Number two, not only surrender your burdens and fears to the Lord, but count on God to provide. If you are to face the future with confidence, count on God to provide. Now, what do we mean by that? It means this. It means this. You take an inventory. You take a clear evaluation of your needs. For example, I know that you have a list of this is, this is for my bill, for my house rent, for my house amortization. This is for my car. This is for my food, for my grocery. I want you to take an account of all of your needs. But don't stop there, folks. Because when you stop there, you will begin to think, man, ito ang sweldo ko. Ito ang pangangailangan ko. Papano ito? What do you do with it? So what you do is take that list just like what I have. I have here a bill of materials. A list of the materials that is needed to construct the building or the structure in Karwan. This was made by engineer. He said that the columns and footings will be around 17,433. The beams, rafters, and roofing, 47,750. The walls and flooring, 63,220. Total materials, 128,403. Plus labor. So that's around 150,000. What will I do? I will take this list to God and say, Lord, please look at this list. We want to build that structure. Give us the money. Provide this for us. And do you know why we already went there to start the building project? Because we count on God to provide. Brethren, if you only take an account of your needs without counting on God to provide, then you will be afraid of life. You will become anxious. Sana kukukuha. Kailangan kong ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Listen to me. Aduman dagiti rumsu ang pagkasapulan, but God is able to supply with more than enough. God said in the Bible, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Let me ask you, do you believe that? There is no question with God's ability to provide. The question is, do you believe that he can provide? I want you to count on God to provide. So folks, whenever we say, ah, kapatid, magsisimula na tayo ng building project sa Ilocosur, let us all respond in faith and say, Amen. We can do it. It can be done by the grace of God. God has promised to provide. It is his nature to provide. Look at the birds. Look at the sparrow. Look at all of God's creation. Who is sustaining them? Why would God create them only to neglect them? Only to let them die without him look, looking after them? Why, why would God tell you to do something only to neglect you? No. Our God is a faithful God. Our God is a loving God. He cares. He provides. He is a heavenly father to us. And if our earthly father knows how to good, good gifts, give good gifts to us, their children, how much more to our heavenly father which is in heaven. Let us trust God to provide. One of God's names is Jehovah Jireh. That is taken from Genesis chapter 22 verse number 14. When Abraham was commanded by God to offer his son Isaac, he obeyed God by faith. 
He believed that God will provide him a sacrifice instead of his son. But he will never encounter the amazing provision of God if he did not take the step of obedience. Listen to me. God had already prepared the provision for you. But you need to take the step of obedience. Hang kay agsabat ka day jay blessing ti apo no saan nga jay pagayatan na iti surutem. Just obey His will. Just obey God and you will meet God's provision. And so when he was in Mount Moriah and he was about to offer his son, for, he was about to, to, to slaughter his son for an offering, God withheld him. And God said, look at your side. And he saw a lamb caught on a thicket and he took that lamb instead of Isaac and he offered that before God. How did the lamb get to the mountain? Because God commanded that lamb. And so because of this amazing encounter with God, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide. He built an altar to memorialize his encounter with God. And he declared to everyone that our God is Jehovah Jireh. It means that God will never stop providing. He provided, He will provide, and He will always provide. Now, you might be asking, but pastor, how will God provide? You believe God's ways. <clears throat> God has amazing ways to provide. But I read in the Bible that God's ways to provide is this. He commands the blessing. God commands the provision. You know our grand piano here? I shared that yesterday. It's a 500,000 worth grand piano. During the pandemic, a lot of folks were watching our Facebook. And while I would play the piano, one person observed me play the piano. And she said to herself, Rep, yung piano ni Reverend, hindi maganda. Ano kaya kung isuggest ko sa kanya na bumili sila ng grand piano? Kasi may grand piano sa bahay niya. Can you imagine that? May grand piano siya sa bahay. So isuggest ko sa kanya, mas maganda. So, she messaged me and she said, Reverend, your, grand pian your piano does not sound good. How about buying a grand piano? So she, she actually, what? Uh, kas lang inyimply na kakabsat, jay desire na nga provide. So I told it to Pastor Jun, at alam mo naman si Pastor Jun, pag sinabihan mo yan, pag nag-click ang mind, walang bukas, ngayon na. Walang bukas sa kanya, ngayon na. So that, that day, I called piano suppliers in Manila. We could not afford a brand new one which will cost 1.5 million. We can only afford a refurbished piano but brand new condition, which was made in Japan. So I called those people I, I got from the internet, from social media. To cut the story short, we purchased that piano, half million. So today, we have a grand piano in the sanctuary. How did we have that? Because God commanded the blessing. Let me just show you a biblical instance here, so you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. Elijah. He was a prophet of God. After talking to King Ahab, God, God told him to go to Brook Cherith. There will be famine in the land. No food, no water. People will starve to death. And God said, go to Brook Cherith. Elijah therefore went to Brook Cherith. There he, here he went. And God sustained him through the water from the Brook Cherith. God said in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 4, verse 17 verse 4, and it shall be, that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Elijah was confident that he will not starve to death. Only he obeyed, he should obey God to be in the place where God wants him to be. And so God commanded the raven. So every day the raven came with Krispy Kreme, with, uh, you know, McDonald's. Every day the ravens fed Elijah. 
And then the raven stopped coming. There comes a point in your life when, you know, you are laid off from job. Lord, what's next? I don't have income anymore. Don't worry. Just follow God's direction. Talk to your pastor. Talk to the leaders that God had placed in your life. And God will guide you through. And so, after the raven stopped coming, perhaps one day God said, Raven, go and take this Krispy Kreme to Prophet Elijah. And the raven said, God, I'm tired. I don't want to go anymore. So the raven stopped coming. You know, just like the brook dried up. So Elijah said, God, what's next? You know, it is very crucial that when you take a step concerning provision for your life, seek God because he is the provider. Seek him. Don't, see, don't seek your own understanding. Seek God. And so God came to him. And in verse 7, verse 7, it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath. See, this is what Matthew 4.4 4 means. That men shall not live by bread alone, the bread that the ravens gave, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Your sustenance depends upon God's directives. So when the raven stops coming, listen to God because he has a word. He will guide you. This is the next thing you need to do. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That is why it is very crucial that you come to church. You never know that the preaching will be used by God as an instrument to provide direction in your life. Let's continue to read. Verse number 8, 9. Arise, God said, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. You know, it will take him a while to get there because Zarephath from the brook Cherit is around 500 kilometers. You walk from Bakara to Manila, that's, that will take you how many days? But Elijah made it to Zarephath because God said, I have commanded a widow woman. In other words, just be where God wants you to be. Just obey his will. Leave the results to God because he has already commanded a provision for it. The bottom line, folks, is this. Count on God to provide. Well, if I give my tithe, if I give my first fruit, if I make commitments, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Listen to me. If God said, hey, withdraw your bank and give it for the ministry. God can replenish that. And he has already planned it, how he will do it. The only question is, are you going to trust him? Are you going to trust him? The Christian life is not walking by sight. Making an account of your needs is sight. That's the human side. But counting on God to provide is faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Count on God to provide. Psalms 133 verse number 3. Listen to me. Psalms 133 verse number 3. It says, For there the Lord commanded the blessings. As the Jew of Hermon, and as the Jew that descended upon the Mount of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So what am I telling here? Faith empowers you to think big. You are not afraid to attempt great things for God because you know you can expect God to do great things. Amen. You know what? Listen, there are some churches here in the Philippines who are telling negative things about HBBC. They said, you know what? Those pastors in the HBBC, they are like dictators. That's always the case. When a leader has a big vision, and he rallies God's people and he speaks with confidence, telling them, folks, let's do this. Let's commit. Let's do it. Then people that are small-minded will tell, that's a dictator. Hello. <laughs> people keep telling, you know what? The HBBC will plant church here, will plant church there. Why? Because we are exercising our faith. We are counting on God to provide. That's how to face the future with confidence. Number three, how can we face the future with confidence? Trust God to guide you. 
You don't know everything. You cannot see everything. But whatever God tells you to do so, just take the first step and God will give you the next step. Just trust God to guide you. Ado digit hante makita kan amuti masakbayan ngem adaiti apo and God is already in your tomorrow. Will you tell that to your seatmate? God is already in your tomorrow. When when God impressed in the heart of Pastor June to move from Big Island to Oahu, he trusted God's guidance. He didn't see everything. He didn't see the church that the church that we have today that was not in his mind. Wala sa isip niya yun. Basta ang alam niya lang, yung command ng Diyos to win souls and if he wanted to take the Great Commission seriously in Hawaii, he knew he needed to be in the right place. And for the time being, for that time being, the right place was Honolulu. Because that is where a lot of people can be found. The marketplace, so to speak. That is where you find a lot of people that you can win to Christ. So the reason why he decided to come to Oahu is not because of more money, but because of more people. In other words, it was because of the Great Commission. It was about the kingdom of God. It was because of the gospel. Do you realize the heart? Do you see that point, folks? The decision was influenced by the Great Commission. Are you following? So he trusted God and he didn't know where to start. He didn't know how to begin. He didn't know to what extent this decision will be taking him into or unto. But he trusted that God will guide him one step at a time. He knew that he, will, he can only cross the bridge when he's there. Perhaps Mama Preacher Glenn would have asked him, so if we go to Honolulu, where are, going, where are we going to work? Where are we going to stay? What, where do we get a job? How can we start all over again? But Pastor June knew that's where God wants us to be. Let's just take one step at a time. I cannot fully answer your questions. But you know, let's, get, let's cross the bridge when we get there. The most important thing is let's be there. <laughs> let's go there. So to Honolulu they went. They came to that place. And lo and behold, God, you know, unveiled so much wonderful blessings in which you and me today are recipients of that step of faith. You see, folks, listen. It is not the quantity of the many things you do in life. It is the quality of what you do that will produce so much quantity in life. Just one step of faith will make all the difference in your future compared to the many things that you are doing now. Ang dami mong ginagawa sa buhay, pero hindi naman ito step of faith. Walang mangyayari. But take a look of one step of faith in obedience to God's direction. It will make a big difference in your future. Trust God to guide you. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. God has promised to direct our paths. But we must acknowledge. Meaning, we need to consider what God says. We need to consider His command. And you know what? Listen to me. You are sure of the way even if you don't see everything in the future. But you will be sure of your way if your guide knows the way. Amen? And we cannot see tomorrow but God is already in our tomorrow and we are sure to obey Him. We are sure of the way as we obey Him because God knows the way. Amen? I remember a few weeks ago when we drove to Manila to pick up the musical instrument, the items, you know, and uh, I, I brought with me Edward and Carlo because I, I, I knew I could not drive back and forth 
Manila back to Ilocos uh, just by myself. I needed I needed a carrelievo. So I, I, I drove from Bacara to Tiplex. The nearest Tiplex in, in Manila now, MM, is, uh, what do you call that? Rosario. Yeah, that's the nearest uh, entrance to Tiplex. Rosario, Pangasinan. So from Bacara to Rosario, ako ang nag-drive. But when we got to Tiplex, Tiplex is Tarlac, Pangasinan uh, Expressway. Okay? So, I said, Edward, you drive. Because this is expressway. So, you drive. Carlo, don't sleep. You watch Edward drive. Okay? You know where we are going, huh? Oh, so, I slept. Natulog ako. After about an hour and a half, or about an hour, yeah, most, more than over an hour, nagising ako. I woke up. And I asked them. I said, so where are we now? And they said, Pastor, NLEX na tayo. We are now in NLEX. NLEX is before Manila. Okay? So uh, I said, okay. So I, I, I went back to sleep. You know? Pero di na ako makatulog. Pag dilat ko ng aking mata, I said, how come there are no cars? Awang masabat, awang masaruno, awang malumbaan. Are you sure? They said, yes, Pastor. NLEX na tayo. Parbangon kami. Isong awan lugan. Nangatwiran pa, 1.30. Parbangon kami sa awan lugan. I look around and it's mountains. I said, walang bundok sa NLEX. Walang bundok, tsaka hindi ganito na madilim. Maliwanag doon, maraming ilaw. Sabi nilang ganyan, Pastor, parbangon kami. Siguradong sigurado, di ba? Pambihira. Di, maya-maya, makita namin yung mga label, mga kapatid. Sabi ko, hindi NLEX to. Papuntang subik ito, sabi ko sa kanila. They didn't take the exit that, that connects to NLEX. Nagdirdirit suda, subik mo tipa pa namin kakabsat. Can you imagine if you trust a guide who doesn't know the way? You are already lost and you don't even know you are lost? Let me tell you this. If you make the unbelievers your guide in life, they themselves are lost and you follow their path, both of you will be lost. How can a blind lead a blind? Both of them will fall into the ditch. So we need to follow God and we need to go to his servants. He has called to guide us and look after our faith. Amen. Let us follow God's guidance. Trust God to guide you. Amen? Let's continue it next time. This is a wonderful message. I hope you were encouraged and your faith was challenged to trust God with your future. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. What a great blessing and encouragement to us today. We will never accomplish great things for you. We will never see you unveil what you have in store for us if we do not trust you and take the step of faith. Dear Lord, I know that you want us to advance in the kingdom. You want us to expand our territory, to enlarge our coast. But Lord, we have cares, we have burdens, and so we bring our fears to you and make our request known unto thee. And dear God, help us, Lord, to never follow the pathway of the lost or the unbelievers. Help us to go to the Bible, to listen to the preaching of thy word, and so we will receive your guidance to us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.